John Charles, thank you very much indeed for coming to talk to eCancer. You're very busy at ASCO, you're an invited speaker, all the way from uh, uh, Gustave Roussy in Paris. What are you talking about? Well, today I'm an invited speaker in a session dealing with personalized medicine in locally advanced non-small cell lung cancer. So, you know, patients who are not resectable, nor metastatic, and have these huge masses in the lung. And this is an area where we haven't done much progress yet. And, uh, and you know, one of the uh, issues and uh, paths of uh, improvement was the idea to combine radiotherapy with targeted agents. But the reality is that until now, this has been a very frustrating field. In one case, we combine anti-angiogenic agents like Avastin with radiotherapy, and we increased tumor sensitivity, we increased tissue sensitivity, and we ended up with major uh, fistulas uh, in the trachea. Uh, the other one was the combination of EGFR tyrosine kinase inhibitors with radiotherapy, and we end up with an arm, which is the experimental arm, below the standard arm. Yeah. So, Probably the big issue in locally advanced non-small cell lung cancer is to personalize therapy. And that comes with the capacity to predict whether the most important issue is local recurrence or metastatic recurrence. So you, you pick up wh wh where you're going to put the weight on therapy, sure. rather radiotherapy, rather systemic therapy. And to do so, it's very clear we need to do more molecular portraits of the tumors of these patients. There is not a single uh, signature, transcriptome signature done in stage 3B patients, able to predict whether you're going to recur locally or metastatically. Second, obviously, uh, and yesterday plenary presentation on this new compound called crizotinib, targeting a subset of lung cancer patients, 5% of them having a specific translocation between ML4 and ALK, is opening the way of new uh, era in lung cancer, where you have objective response rates close to 65 70%. So EGFR mutated patients, they got IRESA, they got Tarsiva. The EML4 ALK, they're going to got crizotinib. And of course, the ER2 mutated ones, they already have Herceptin. So the, this disease, which seems to be a large disease, is being uh, sliced in different yeah. parts, like a salami, with uh, these slices having sometimes uh, very specific compounds able to uh, have substantial benefit and major tumor shrinkage. So you routinely at Gustav Roussy do genomics on your on your tumor samples. Um, how how uh, small a sample can you work with, and how, what's the best way to get it in this kind of patient that you're talking about? Yeah, I think the the key issue is how many tumor cells you get in the yeah. sample, and obviously the standard bronchoscopic technique uh, sometimes uh, gets uh, small numbers of cells and uh, necrotic cells. So. When bronchoscopies are done, we need to really to have at least two or three pieces. And the alternative to that is obviously doing a CT guide biopsy. And you need to use an 18 gauges needle to get that. And that's enough to get okay. uh, DNA for uh, mm, what we do mostly is not a full transcriptional profile because lung is not a disease in which that is so helpful at this time point. The most helpful things are to look for specific mutations. So we do right. uh, specific uh, PCR uh, screening for mutations. But you're not short of specific mutations in, uh, in non-small cell lung cancer, especially in the smokers. ALK is particularly uh, relevant to the non-smoking adenocarcinoma. You are correct. I mean, most of your patients uh, will have 100 mutations, won't they? The problem yeah. is which ones are driving the process and which ones you are the, the passerby. You are right. I mean, the, the problem is very different between the never smokers, but the mm. never smokers are increasing, you know. Nope. That's up to 20% of the patients who come from consultation at Institute Gustav Roussy. But the, the smokers, indeed, is a, is a much more complex situation. Nevertheless, when you have a smoker with a PI3K mutation, this is really pinpointing a specific way where it should be going. There is new data, apparently, about FGFR amplifications in this subset of patients. So I think we're going to start having some new agents, even in the heavy smoking population. Mm -hmm. that's, that's very exciting. So um, you're doing a whole load of phase one studies and uh, phase two, randomized phase two, and so on. Um, where are you um, um, going to go after this ASCO? Are you going home and you're going to put more accent on this area or on that area? Is mTOR going one way, MEK inhibition another way? Well, What's your personal uh, uh, idea for the next year or two? I think there are two issues here. 
the first one is that we have seen this ASCO, that combination of targeted agents are bringing something. The very impressive data in breast with the combination of uh, uh, mTOR inhibitor and an IGF-1 R antibody. Yeah. And uh, we, what we have also seen, unfortunately, is that contrary to what we were hoping, combination of targeted agents is extremely toxic. There has been very clear presentations showing that, in fact, combining two targeted agents that seem to be very friendly end up in additive toxicity. Yeah. So this is gonna be a challenge, uh, but it's one of the paths forward. The second path I think is we really need to start thinking differently in phase one. We cannot keep in this process where we, we, we take all commerce, three plus three escalation dose, without molecular profiling the patient and enriching the population. I think we, when we do that retrospectively, we don't do it right because we use two more samples that are old of three or four years disease when we are treating something totally different. Who believes that the molecular portrait of a resected colorectal cancer is the reflection of the disease of a metastatic colorectal cancer that went through uh, fall fox, fall fury, avastin, cetuxim, avectibix. It's nonsense. I mean, yeah. we need to start doing molecular portraits on the true tissue that is the reflection of the tumor you're treating. When you marry someone, you look at her. You don't look at the old picture, how now she was. If you look at the mother, of course, that's always amazing. That's very important. <laughs> sure, thank you so much thank for you. coming and joining in cancer.